Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Oh, hello. We've got a guest today. Um, this is one of our chickens. I've literally just grabbed her, she's still got grass in her mouth. So I'm going to chuck her out in a minute. But she want to say hello to her. There she is. Say hello. Yes. And she can go back. She's nice and warm actually. She feels really lovely. She can go back to her friends now. And um, whilst um, I'm taking her back out, I'm going to show you what you can win today. Hopefully you like our special visitor today. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Just read what you can win today. Okay, so today you need to tell us about your most interesting chicken encounter. It might have been just the one that happened a second ago and you can win yourself two £15 gift vouchers if you pop your experience into the comments on the live stream today on YouTube, which is the 21st of... Um, no, it's the 22nd of February um, and then it will also be live streamed again on um thursday the 24th um at 7 p.m on our facebook main page i can still hear outside she's like calling where are you where are you bless her anyway let's um have a look what you are actually making today and it's um it's actually that size i'm making this size um and she has got hidden away three chicks i could squeeze a fourth in there no doubt and then i have also got <clears throat> Um, a larger version here and of course they're uh, out of this book I'm just going to show you that on the overhead camera um, so if you have got this um, if you have got this book then that's great if you don't have it you can always get it and it is in the spring section here you can see the pictures here and I'm following um, the instructions sort of I, I made a version this morning and I already thought oh could, this could be done differently but that's always what happens with needle felting you always find other ways of slightly improving it or fitting it more to your materials to your tools and to your likings as well so you the little chicken will comfortably fit four but I only made three because I'm going to make one along with you so I'm going to use this book. Um, the one thing I haven't done, which I'm going to do right now, is I need to set myself up so I can actually read the comments and I can still hear the chicken outside. She's obviously not found her friends again. Oh, I'm so mean. I'm sure she will find them. They probably just... Can you hear her? I can still hear her. She's like, where are you? Um, I didn't put her back where I found her with, with, her, with her friends. So anyway, this is... Um, Let's have a look what um what who is here in the house today and saying hello to everybody. Oh, we've got a full house. Um, we have got start at the beginning. Um, Sandra is here. Hi Sandra. Hi Karen. Hi Catherine. Hi Jane. Um, hi Carol. Um, hi Alicia, of course. Um, Lorna. Hi Lorna. Um, oh, this is a new name I've not heard. Emberlini. Em. Emberlini. I, I'm not sure if I pronounce this right, but it's really lovely to have you here. I usually seem to have work meetings. Well, this is much better than work meetings. Laura is there. Um, we have got Bridget there, Angela, probably said that already, Melanie, Karen, Vampire Venom, Alison, maybe said that already too. We've got Olga there, um, Liz, Heather, maybe another Karen, not quite sure. Erica is there. Hello. Um, awkward prawn Michael is there hi Michael I haven't seen you in ages um we have got oh we've got oh we've got a vampire midnight I wonder if vampire venom is that is um anything to do with you um so yes do um do tell us um your funny encounters with chickens and pop them in the comments here 
Um, I think we've already got one comment here from Vampire Midnight who says, when I was younger, I went camping with my dad and sister and the chickens scared me so I never wanted to leave the tent by myself. Oh, oh. Anyway, they're not scary as you have just seen. <clears throat> um, Donna, Donna is there all the way from um, Scotland. Um, we've got people here from across the pond um, in Australia. We've got usually have visitors from the US. We've certainly got people from the Netherlands and probably from other countries that I don't even know um, that you're um, watching from. Lynn is there and Penny. And I think I mentioned everybody. Diana is there as well, all the way from the Isle of Mull. Right, let's um, let's start, basically. That's all I can say. So this is a stash buster. Um, a stash, a stash buster project. I love the stash buster, buster projects because you can use any color wool you want. But if you can see, I've kept it quite sort of um, chicken color. But you can use any other color. You can mix colors. And let's just have a look what I've got here in front of me today. So we've got our muted orange. Remember what we still have got on. Very important to know this right now is that we've got our felting fiber February still on, which means with the code um capital f f e b 25 you get still 25 percent off on all fibers until the end of this month so don't don't waste the code um and if you haven't got any stash and you need to build it up we all need to build stash up then please do so so we've got our muted orange here <clears throat> i've got i've actually got some uh, black here but i've also got some brown black here i quite like that brown black i've been using it lots recently We've got our dragon mix. Now, I love this, but you can so easily make your own dragon mix by just mixing lots of colors together. I love this for chickens. And in fact, this one here is made from it. Um, I do also love our um, fox red variegated and uh, sorry, that's not fox red. That's our that's our fox rust variegated and our um, fox rust not variegated, basically. And this is what this chicken has been. No, it's not even true. I don't know what I've used. That's not, that is because that is not, okay, I've grabbed the wrong one. That's our um, Dormouse Oka. But anyway, the chicken that is, you can see here is our fox, fox rust variegated that I've used for this one. Um, I even think this is a great one and um, I'm going to make a chicken out of that. And that is part of the um, natural dyed rainbow that comes in, in this quite nice color and um, so I've got that here as well. I've got the golden yellow and I've got the light yellow. I've got our poppy red and I've even got some flesh pink because that's sometimes quite nice to sort of um, not quite give it white, but make the colors a little bit um, less um, vibrant. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's all my all my um, chicken colors. And then you do need a pipe cleaner. And um, this one is the extra strong pipe cleaner that I've got here. That one is made with the extra strong pipe cleaner. This one here is actually made with one length of the, um, oh, I can't even see that, with a with a flexible um, 45 centimeter flexible steel wire. So you can proportion things up. You could even go bigger and bigger if you wanted to. Now, if you've seen that little, well, not so little chicken here at the back, she was um, one of our projects at a, at a um, winter retreat. Um, I think, I think Jane, you were definitely there for that winter retreat, weren't you, with Claire? And uh, we made the chickens. I always remember, um, not on this one so much, but the chickens that we made, we, we wrapped the feet with wool. And then um, I bought some PVA glue that um, I should have just used our own. But for some reason, I thought I'd buy big bottles and we had to cover it with PVA glue, all the all the woolen feet um, so that they become really it's like the beak here that was covered in PVA and it, it, it becomes fluffless and quite solid. So it looks more like a, um, a diff, like a like a beak texture or leg texture. But they had to be um, they had to be drying overnight and the glue wasn't drying very well because I, I bought cheap old watery glue and um, they were all sitting um, literally with their legs over the back of the chairs with fan heaters going all night to try and clear dry and um, dry the um, the legs but anyway if you want to see how a big chicken is made you can hop onto our website brand new website by the way 
um, hopefully it is um, all um, working or trialing it out literally now. Um, and um, uh, Alicia, no doubt, will put it in the link. But it's our ginger ninja that you can um, see the stages of how she's been made. If you're if you're crazy about chickens, that's another way to get your chickens. And remember last year, we did the standing chicken. I haven't got her here now, but we did the standing chicken as a tutorial. That's so quite a stylized um, chicken that was quite fun. So you can still find that on YouTube. And of course, she's a um, cover girl here on the Making Needle Felted Animals is the, the chicken that you can make out of the book as well. She's only about that size. So, um, but she, and she has legs. No, she hasn't got um, a secret cover to, to hide. Oh, gosh. Hide treasures in or similar. Right. Okay. Let's get started. Let's do that. And I'm going to open the book up um, so I can remind myself to follow the um, step by step instructions. And if you um, didn't see the book, it's the Making Simple Needle Felts, where this project is out of. So let's get to the overview camera. And we have got here, first of all, um, the pipe cleaner. How do I keep this book down now? I haven't got anything heavy, so I have a mug. And it's got the maker's mug on there. Okay, so um, first twist one pipe cleaner end so that you make a circle of about four centimeters. And um, um, for this, if you haven't got a centimeter, um, uh, gauge. Don't worry too much if it's not exactly the right measurements. Um, you can sort of gauge it roughly by looking at it because the um, the remi remaining end that will become the head is is about three to four centimeters. So if if you need to gauge it, it's probably about that much. And then you twist this into a loop. But I am measuring this now. Yeah, that's four centimeters. So you just twist this in a loop. Now I will just say these extra strong pipe cleaners, what makes them extra strong is that they are not floppy. So they don't flop if you if they have anything on there. You see they stay absolutely um, stiff. However, they are not strong in that you can bend them back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. They will break. So you need to be mindful of that. So now you've got your um, base here. Put it this way. And then you're going to bend in about um, three to four centimeters, so it's, it's, it's a little bit less than the diameter of this shape. You bend this into um, the tail, like that, okay? And then this will become the body, and this is the neck. Um, and, um, and that's basically it. So that's the shape, looks quite weird. Um, if you want this cavity to be, be bigger, then just make it bigger now, and then you might have to extend the neck a little bit. So make it a little bit bigger. Um, you can probably do this, like adjust it once um, and um, um, without doing too much damage to the pipe cleaner. But um, basically, this is your starting shape. So a loop here, then you go uh, up for the tail, down for the tail, straight along um, a, across the loop. Um, but not attaching it, it's separate, and then you go up for the neck. So the, the doubled up wire becomes the tail, and the uh, single um, pipe cleaner here becomes the neck. And then the next thing that you're going to do is you have to choose your colors, and I'm actually going to make a chicken out of this color. I think that'd be fun. So this is like a, um, this is like a, um, a natural orange. This has been dyed with um, um, madder. Sorry, I couldn't think of the name then. So all you're going to do now is you're going to wrap this chicken up and you can shoot over the, the loop of the tail a little bit because we're going to make that tail a little bit longer than the actual pipe cleaner is. Just go wrap this up. But what you're not wrapping is this loop. This loop is staying completely separate for the time being, but you are wrapping along the body and keep your wool nice and flat. That's the best way to wrap wool. Go all the way up towards the neck of the chicken. If you get to the end of the wool, make sure it's nicely fastened in so it doesn't come off. And then grab a new bit. Now, if you've got um, wool that you um, think, oh, that will look really nice as a chicken, don't put it on the inside. Um, so if you haven't got enough, make sure you use the, the parts of the wool you don't like so much on the outside. And then you're just going up the neck. And we're not bending the wire or the... Um, 
the end of that in. We're keeping it, but we're shooting just over it a little bit. So there's there's the end of the wire, and I've got a little bit of fluffy wool just gone past it. And then you're going to give it another bit of a wrap so that um, the body is a little bit more solid. What does it actually say in the book? It says the layer should be fairly thin, but should cover these parts of the pipe cleaner. Next up, more layers, especially around the body and tail. The neck and head of the chicken sh should be th thinner than the tail. Okay, so let's just go back on the body. Keep that neck thin. So here we go. So the um, maybe a little bit more on the body. <clears throat> I'm going to put that purple on the inside. I don't think I want that on the outside. So that will later on be completely gone. And I'm going to get my um, A6 Earth Friendly Felting Mat. There we go. Um, um, a nice, almost a nice new one. And I'm going to use, uh, no, you see, this is interesting. This is, this wool doesn't like the, um, the coarse um, felting needle. Can you see how it's bouncing off? It's not actually going through. It's literally bouncing off. So I'm going to go down a size to a medium felting needle. Um, you could also use a twist, twisted needle because the twisted needle tends to get in there better. Now this is a coarse twisted needle and it does go in but it's still not ideal. So I think we're definitely heading for a medium needle on um, on this project. So I'm going for a standard, um, ah, back, now we're talking, a standard um, orange coloured needle and I'm just going to give it a few stabs to make sure it doesn't unwind itself. So I've got a very strange con construction here now. I've got the the um, the tail here, I've got the body there and the neck there, and this is going to be the cover tee. So I want that quite separate so that um, what will happen now is we're going to wrap the wool across the top of the body. So you do need um, a nice um, biggish sheet. It doesn't have to be thick, but you do need an, um, a good size for it so that it goes all the way across the body I'll show you this from the side. So you want to tuck it inside the ring like that. And you want to go, you want it to go across the body. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to squish it down because this bit here becomes the cover tee. And if you're squishing that down now, you're not going to have that hole. So you're almost wrapping this chicken. It already looks like a chicken now, but you're wrapping this chicken with there still being um, space inside. And that is going to be the hollow of the chicken. So we don't want a big tummy in there. We just want there to be a cavity already. But for now, you're just going to wrap it around the chicken and you're sort of felting into nothingness a bit. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to um, enclose, not enclose, but you're trying to cover the, um, the pipe cleaner um, loop. So starting out, so stab really close to the pipe cleaner loop but not into the wire because that will break your needle. So I'm going to do this. Um, and whenever you stab into here, it's like nothing because that's the, that is the cavity. So we want to maintain that cavity. So the biggest mistake you could do is squish that down and cover the whole thing up. So this is what it looks like. Um, this is the head looking inside the chicken. And now you're going to use a little bit more wool if you haven't been able to cover it all in one go. Use a little bit more wool, cover the ring again. So it's the it's that ring that needs to be um, fully covered with the wool, and then felt it down, and then felt it also onto the shape. But make sure that you don't pull it so tight because you do want there to be that lovely cavity that we've just worked hard to create. Ah, I nearly swore then, but I did break my needle. Okay, the other end um, just popped somewhere else, so I'm going to put this into, um, it's, it's flown over there, and I, I will find it after the live stream. Okay, another needle bites the dust. Let's get, um, let's see if I can find another one. Oh, there's another orange one. Um, yeah, this is always the danger when you work with wire, it can snap your needle, as it has just been proven. So I'm working more on the inside of the chicken at the moment because I want to make sure this cavity is definitely there than on the outside. And um, and then I'm going to gently stab the rest of the wool onto the chicken. Now, if, if you have to stab really hard to get it fastened on, then do um, change to the next needle size down um, because every wool responds differently. When I've been um, needle felting these little 
chickens here or this bigger one here i have actually used a coarse needle but it's a diff it's quite a coarse wool so it's it, it's not surprising that it takes the coarse needle better um, and i'm going to change down this wool is because it is um naturally dyed it doesn't uh, follow the same dyeing process as when you're using acid dyes when you use natural dyes you have to bring the wool to a high temperature and that already kind of pre-felts the wool so they tend not to be as suitable for wet felting the naturally dyed wools um, because that m makes the wool the, the dye fasten into it so they have to be brought at a higher to a higher temperature than what you would do with the acid dyes and that kind of pre-felts them a little bit which is I love them because they're already a bit felted so what's not to love um, but needles don't necessarily love them or at least not the coarse needles right I fasten the wool now to the neck and um, now I've got to literally just work my way around the chicken to put it back into shape and um, and give it that sort of I always say it's a gondola shape you want this to be flat at the top and then you've got the two ends one is the tail one is the head this is the head sticking up on on um, on the two sides so it's a little bit of a different kind of felting where you've got to be quite careful <clears throat> not to felt it solid you do want to, to felt the wool but it's kind of felting it into nothingness so I'm always going in there with my hand to make sure that I've got that nice cavity can you see that's there and felting the wool down all around it um, to make sure that it's neat around the ring um, on the inside and on the outside but I'm not closing that hole up and so it, it's quite a different thing from maybe what you've ever done before I've actually also already bent my needle now again <laughs> so this is this is not so good okay but thankfully you can buy needles from us so um, yes good job okay so this this is how far I, I've got um, for the time being I'm just gonna have a quick check-in with the chat and see um, what your most scariest or was it a scary encounter it was the most interesting chicken encounter um, Everybody loved a special guest. I wish I could tell you what she's called. The children know all the names of the chickens, but I have no idea. Uh, we've had so many. I, I I know some of their names from the past, but I'm not um, up with current affairs at the moment. Oh, don't talk about current affairs. We're keeping this whole thing completely politically free. We're just a happy bunch stabbing needles. You can imagine whoever you want to when you stab the needle into it. But we um we just we just want to spread lots of light, lots of fun, lots of laughters, lots of chickens, and um and that's it. Okay, so today, right now, when you're watching this, this is your space that we keep absolutely clean, okay? Right, um, Amanda says, um, or Mandy even, hello, I won't be able to stay long because I've got to go to work. Oh, blast. Well, you, you she, she'll be gone by now. Visited father at nursing home, surprised to see him holding chicken. Didn't realize they kept chickens at the home. Oh, that's nice. Pet a chicken. Elizabeth says, being chased by chicken when staying at a friend's farm as a child, haha, ha, they can be quite aggressive. The funny thing is they don't chase you because they, they probably just chase you because they think you've got food. So if you just like scratch in the soil or anything like that, they'll, they'll just start pecking there. Oh, Pamela is there all the way from Oregon. Um, good morning, she says. I wish. Uh, Bridget says, I kept a rooster. Oh, I'm not so sure about roosters. They're definitely scary. Um, after a science experiment at high school and Jason lived in the bushes near the top, top probably and had an aversion to some people Jason would leap out of the bushes and fly at mostly men well I think roosters is a different thing we don't keep roosters we, it's, we're females only so we're, we're safe um, Melanie says I have a chicken that will steal my cup of tea if it gets the chance <laughs> Do you mean it's going to drink it or it drags it away? I need to know that now. Um, Diana says, I like visiting my friend up the road as she keeps chickens who lay the most delicious eggs. Well, I will be honest that the color of the egg yolk of our chickens is, well, it's actually, it's like that. It's probably more, it's even more vibrant than that. It's all, it almost looks um, nuclear, but it's not. It's just natural. Um, Donna says, no particular chicken stories. I do remember when my younger brother went into the shed to collect the duck eggs 
one duck wasn't happy and came back to the shed, pecked his bottom as he bent over. Yeah, ducks are a bit more aggressive, I think. Oh my goodness, don't get me going on geese. Um, it's not an encounter as such, but my daughter is obsessed with showing me pictures of chickens running towards people when they bring them treats. They never fail to make me laugh. They are so good. Honestly, they are so funny when they run. And have you ever seen a chicken jump up um, if it wants something from a higher place and it can't get to it? It's the funniest thing ever. And when they run, so the film Chicken Run, they captured it absolutely perfectly how chicken um, how chicken run and how, what chicken are, chickens are like. I love that film so much because they basically, they, there's always... Um, there's always an escapist, there's always a, a slightly dim one who doesn't quite get it. There's always one that gets themselves into trouble all the time. And um, I just absolutely love it how they've captured that the, the nature of chickens. And they're literally like ladies sitting there, so having a, a bit of a grumble and a chat. And then as soon as you turn up, they're like, don't say anything. I absolutely love it. Um, Marion says, my son had chickens and they used to run the, uh, to the fence and when I went to see them, I didn't go in their run because I was afraid they'd mock me. <laughs> uh, Karen says, I um, had to hold a bantam chicken, give it a cuddle during a school experience, although I wasn't too keen. Oh, my children love chickens. They grew up with chickens when they were like so tiny and they were just the best pets to have. And um, we do have one chicken. I don't know if it's the one that I held, but she is very partial to um, sneaking into the house at any opportunity. So we're never quite sure. If you leave the door open too long, she's in there. Like, it's normal. You know, it's not even like she doesn't even look guilty or anything or worried. She's just like, oh, hello, finally somebody let me in this house. That's where I belong. So... Anyway, while I'm chatting away, I'm stabbing the chicken too. So I'm going to go back onto the overhead camera and we can do it together. Right, here we go. So I'm um, stabbing down the top layer of that wool now. But a lot of the time when I'm stabbing, can you see how I'm actually stabbing into nothingness? So when you stab into the sides, it's literally just stabbing into the wool to fasten it and make it more secure, fasten it um, together in itself, rather onto itself, rather um, into a particular um, solid shape. So you're just making it um, that way. Now, um, the tail is a little bit big, so I'm gonna felt that down now. With tails, you can have the tail so that it um, it's more narrow that way, which is what they normally have chickens, but you can also get fun tail chickens where the tail is the other way. So it, it's, it broadens out basically. Um, so and neither of it is, um, is, is wrong or right. They're both right. Um, well, neither of them are wrong, they're both right. Depends what kind of chicken you've got. So they've, if they've got a dovetail chicken, a dovetail, um, then um, that, that's absolutely fine. They can all have different shape chick um, tails. <clears throat> So I'm going to dress my chicken a little bit more because she's still quite skinny and I'm constantly conscious of not covering up this cavity. So I might even pull at it a little bit, but she's definitely skinny. Um, so she needs to be fattened up a bit and I'm going to change for this needle because it's bent and I'm going to um, add a bit more bulk to her. So you can build the bulk up. You can do this in shape of um, wings so they can go here on the side and you can bulk it up or you can just bulk up the sides um, first and then flatten it down and then put wings on um, afterwards. The main thing is, and that doesn't go away, is that you can maintain that cavity inside. Don't stick your fingers in there while you're fel felting because you're going to hit your fingers with the needle. And just... Um, work along shaping it as as you um, see I'm still trying to get really close to this uh, pipe cleaner um, so without stabbing into it so it's like a question of going from one side it's actually quite satisfying to felt from the inside because you can actually felt into something and this side is where I've added a bit of bulk so you just changing is almost like there's no um, particular part that you finish off first you're literally just going over the same stuff now i've got a i've made her a little bit wider on that side now i've got to make her wider on that side notice what i'm doing is i'm, I'm pinching the wool and pulling off little batches 
actually the chicken is going to be pink um purple on the outside now that's all right and then i felt it down like a um a wad of wool that goes on top of where i want to build the bulk but i'm always going around the edges first that's not that's not the wings yet i think i'm just building bulk to um make the chicken a bit fatter and then i'm actually felting this down mainly from the inside going all the way into the felting mat and into the wool on the outside and then you can turn it round and stab into there as well. We do want the chicken to be quite fluffy so you could make it um, keep it quite fluffy if you want to. It doesn't have to be um, softly felted to be fluffy because the top layer could just be fluffy and everything else underneath it could be nice and solid but um, fluffy doesn't isn't a bad look on a chicken that's all I'm saying. And stuff more into. I actually would prefer to use a slightly thicker needle, um, because I feel a bit. It's a, it's a bit vulnerable that needle, <laughs> with all the wire going around there. And so now she's definitely she's gained bulk, but we've still got a hole inside, so that's good. And um, and now I can give her a bit of a chest here as well in exactly the same way. So the, the, the bulk gets built up um, on the sides and on um, the crop area. So if she's had lots of corn, that part will become quite um, bulging and big. So don't worry if it looks slightly exaggerated, but uh, she does need a good feed as she's got um, her little chicks to look after. So felt that down. On the outside first as well along up the neck and fattening the chicken up that way okay that's it so yes she's definitely sitting nicely she's um, a nice shape i quite like the shape lots of it will um, still be worked on so we um we can watch some of the areas getting smaller and then building up again if need be so i'm just stabbing it down on the side so it doesn't look like she's got a ring around her base where obviously she does have a ring around her base um so i think alicia's just asked the wool that i'm using has got um um like other colors in it is that what you're saying so it's part of the rainbow um wool that um actually i think you might have had in your surprise box um this month without giving too much away it's, it's nearly the end of the month and um it's quite a pale orange i really love this orange but it also it um the i've grabbed the bit that goes into um it's meant to be red really but it's uh, been dyed with mother and mother can sometimes be more orange than red and then it's going into the purple and that is basically the whole wool um is comes in a in a um in a in a rainbow um color with different sections and they sort of melt into each other so you have your um, and it's it's terrible, but they put it in the wrong order, the rainbow, which let's not talk about that at all. But um, yeah, I think they've got the they've got the green on the other side of the orange, which is um, obviously bad, but um, in my books anyway. But <clears throat> anyway, not let's not let's not worry about that right now. Um, so I hope that was answered the question that was being asked. I really like this wall. I think it's totally underrated um, in in that. Um, um, yeah, we should sell so much more of this wool because you get, um, I think you get four colours, which is the green, orange, purple, maybe you get, um, I want to say blue, maybe you get five colours and yellow, can't remember now, but definitely look it up on our website um, and it's the natural dyed rainbow wool, I think it's really nice. Right, a nice pastel chicken. You could make all the, um, you could make a whole range of chickens and they all sort of look quite similar, um, where you can tell that they all come from a similar batch of wool, albeit the different colorways. So now I've got, um, I've got the, the chicken here, the tail. You can extend a bit of the tail if you want to make it a bit more fluffy or you can just keep it like this. That's entirely up to you, however you want your chicken to appear. Like I say, if you've got a, a chicken with a with a dovetail, 
or a fantailed. I, I want to say fantail, not dovetail. If I say dovetail, then that, that that's probably makes no sense whatsoever. I mean fantail so that it goes out like that. Um, and now I've got to give my chicken um, a head. Now chickens don't actually have a specific head. I know that sounds terrible, but if you look at chickens, it's almost like just they have a head, which is the extension of the neck. So we don't need to do very much um, getting the head done. Um, in fact, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, a comb, a wattle and a beak to attach to my chicken. But before I do that, I'm just going to wrap the end a bit more with wool because there is a lot of, um, I can feel the wire straight away there. And I, I need it to be a little bit more built up with wool. Right. That's, that'll do. And now I need a different colour for um, the comb and the wattle. And I'm going to stick with red. So I have got my poppy red here. I'm just going to take um, a wisp and I am going for um, a coarser needle now. And all I'm going to do now is I'm felting down a flat piece of wool. I'm making some felt. And um, let's go to this page because that's what we're at now. Well, I am at that. And I um, so you use... Um, to make the comb and wattle, use your wisp of red wool and holding it flat on your mat, work into a piece of felt. Make sure you keep turning it over and avoid stabbing the needle too deeply into the mat, as this will fasten it onto the mat more quickly. Once it's a solid, it is a solid but thin piece of felt cut through the middle. So let's get this piece done first. I'm going to go down. So I am now using a coarse needle, but actually I do want a medium needle. So I'm going back to the orange. Um, orange needle, felt this down into a piece of felt. So now I've felted it down, but I've also fastened it on. So I've got to peel this off very gently off the mat, felt it from the other side, and then do this again. For this, you can also use the, um, the firm base of the mat if you prefer. It, um, it probably will make it less stick to the mat. Yeah, it's better that way. And keep stabbing it. You're, you're not aiming for a particular shape. You're just aiming to make a flat piece of wool. And then we're going to use the scissors to cut this. Oh, I knew I had to go. Oh, no, there are some scissors here. I thought I'd forgotten my little scissors, but I have got them. And side again so I'm not stabbing quite so deep now because I don't want to push all the fibers back through again. Right so now all I'm doing is I'm cutting this in half. One half will be the, the comb, one half will be um, the um, the wattle and actually I'm going to use this for my wattle because what I want to do first of all is I'm going to felt this into sort of slightly more of an oblong, oblong, oblong shape um, almost like a figure eight by tucking the middle bits in. And I'm doing this by just stabbing sideways into the shape. This will be two sides of the of the wattle. You can see it. It's like a bow tie, if you imagine it. You can see it, the shape happening here. And um, I'm just going to use this first and attach it to the neck of my chicken. And I do this literally by stabbing into that middle part of um, the felt piece and um, I don't need to do very much at all because those two sides are now wanting to close up in the center and that's exactly what I want to happen for um, the chicken's um, wattle so it sort of it comes out but use your sister sisters don't use your sisters use your scissors to neaten it up a bit if need be so these are now the two flappy bits on the chin of the chicken um, and they're sort of coming out and then you're going to um, use the other part that you've cut off there and uh, you can um, open up some of the wispy fibers and stick it on top of the head like a hut and then very gently with your needle this is a bit fiddly i will be honest stab these loose fibers into the top of the head and you're gonna have to work from both sides at all times because once you fasten it on one side it looks like it's slightly wonky on the head, so you then you have to stab on the other side again. So it's just a back and forth and back and forth all the time. 
and let it come right towards um, the front of the face because chickens, their, um, their combs sometimes almost touch the beak. And um, so now I've got the comb here, the two flappy bits. You can cut into the comb to make them slightly, so the comb bits, they're always going forward. I need to just make the shape a bit <clears throat> more distinct. So switch it around all the time, it just needs to stay on there. So we'll cut into it. Just maybe, I don't know, a couple of times. Just shape it however you feel like it. And they sort of lean forward a little bit, the, um, the, the, the struggly bits. The smaller your comb is, the younger your chicken. That's how you can tell how old they are. And then you're going to make a beak. And um, the beak is... It is literally trying to aim for a, um, a little grain size, like a, a little rice corn size. And what I do is I'm holding on to one wispy end and the other end I'm stabbing um, by, uh, by turning it all the time, turning it round, and stabbing the fibres together so that I have got a, a more solid part here. Twist it in your fingers because that flattens the fibers. And if need be, again, you can use your finger, um, sorry, scissors, not the sisters, your scissors to trim it slightly. Just make sure that you've got a nice solid piece there. And then if you have too much of the wispy ends, cut, uh, tear some off. But otherwise, just make a tiny little dome um, by teasing the fibers sideways. It's a bit fiddly, I, I will be honest. Put that onto the chicken's face. And then, as you did with the comb, just stab it in by turning it round one side to the other. It's sort of quite hawk-like, the beak, so it could be um, uh, pointing down a little bit. And of course, if you're making um, a slightly larger um, scale, then um, the, the beak will and the, everything else will be slightly bigger. And all that's left now um, is, is putting the eyes in. Now this head is definitely very thin, so I'm going to build up a little bit of bulk, only because if you put glue in eyes in, they're probably, the pin will probably just pop out on the other side. So I'm making my head here a little bit um, bigger. See, nothing's ever lost. You can always do this, even after. Cover up some of the wool that's spilled over the sides. Felt that down, and I'm going to do that on the other side as well. That is not in the book, because in the book I think the head is already a little bit um, thicker. And chickens have got sort of quite distinct eyes. They're not pretty, That that is for sure, for sure. But they have almost sort of like the, the material that goes around their... Um, the, the material, I say material, but the texture of the wattle and the comb is sometimes what they've got on their faces as well. So you could use a tiny bit of wool and mix it um, with um, the red, whatever the, the colour of your chicken is. Mix it. I'm even shortening the fibres as I'm mixing it because I need tiny amounts. And then put one um, patch on one side and felt this down as neat as you can into sort of a ring and that is where the eye is going to sit on and then do that on the other side as well so um, I just felt it on and then I fold the sides in so that I can make a really smaller concentrated batch, patch there. So I've got a red, almost like a red eye on my chicken now on both sides. And then all you need is um, whatever glue in eyes you've got, whether you've got amber, clear, I've got black here at the moment. I'm going to go for a really small size, I think, because it's quite a small chicken. So I'm either going to go for... Um, three or four millimeters and um, to put the eye in you just poke a hole into the middle of that red patch 
we're doing one side at a time even though the needle comes out on the other side which is a bit of a clue as well make sure you don't have your fingers there sink the eye into the hole and then uh, use your nozzle of the glue bottle put a dab of tiny dab of glue on there oh gosh that's a big gap dab and then you repeat this on the other side and again what size did I use now cut size put the eye in add a dab of glue behind it and then you just leave it to dry and you um, you obviously because you've got a, um, a pipe cleaner in there you can bend your um, the necks the neck of the chicken um, to your liking so it doesn't have to be um, sticking up like that she looks a little bit like she's worried or telling you off running after you or whatever but you can make her look a little bit less worried um, by changing the shape so you can um, bring her down a bit squish the head down a bit you can even point the head more forward <laughs> there like that and she looks a lot cuter now rather than uh, a um, a chicken in distress again you can still add more bulk to the outside of the chicken as long as you keep that inside um, part nice and hollow because that's where the chicks are going to go and um, again you can um, give your you can add more uh, details on there you can add some you can mix some wool remember it's a stash buster so mix the wool however you like it could just give her some um, slightly sort of feathery looking um, additions like I say make her some wings felt them on really softly like that it's always good to stuff on the inside as well there nice and fluffy and then do that on the other side as well give her some tail feathers if you want to have them sort of slightly sticking out definitely saves them from the inside and um, and that sort of almost makes it look more fluffy as well whilst it's felting it on it also makes it nice and fluffy and wispy looking so you've got <clears throat> um, slight features there on your chicken now and then um, let's make the chicks now this is quite a big cavity if you want it to be smaller i have got like a um look i've got like a um marble egg i think it's marble it could fit fits yeah i think that that egg fits nicely inside there so if you if you're planning to put maybe a sweet treat in there for easter then this is um probably about the right size but if you're making uh, little chicks like these ones here um, then it might be a little bit big so um, no it's all right actually there's three in there now not they're not falling out so I'm going to show you next how to make the little chick to fit inside your um, your hen and just so that you can see this one's definitely a lot bigger and it actually does cover up a whole egg sitting on an uh, egg cup so you've got um, you've got your choices there as well Right, um, so we're coming to the chicks next, but um, I'm just going to um, tell you what else is happening here at the, the Makers. So next week we have got, believe it or not, it's the first. Um, so, um, oh, the rubber, mush, rubber mat. Um, Alicia is wanting me to pick off the fibers here of the thing. I will do that too, but I'm just going to tell you what, what's happening next week. So next week, believe it or not, we've got the first of the month already. February was way too short. So next week we have, we're have we starting um, on Tuesday at 11 o'clock. It's always a couple of hours earlier than our makers make along. I actually don't know why. Um, and um, we're doing our sub boxes, unwrapping our sub boxes at 11 o'clock. And um, they will be um, the hippo, the um, lily of the valley fairy, and the surprise box is, um, no, gosh, no idea, I can't remember, hang on, I've got it written out, is 
um, oh yes, the storm in a teacup. Oh yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. And then, as we've all been looking forward to, is the Posable Bunny that's happening on the 8th of March. And then we're doing the Lily of the Valley Fairy on the 15th of March. So just the fairy, not the baby. Um, and uh, Alicia asked me to pick up the um, colours here of the mat. And that is done. But I, I love this one here. We also have a silicon um, mat, which works too. This one is a bit more expensive, but it's so good. I've been using it this morning because I've been felting so much over the last few days and I've had to clean up my mats. So you can just literally clean your mat, um, pick off the fiber, keep it or put it in the bin. And the same on this one here, it just literally takes care of um, the wool that you've added to your mat. It, it will start to discolor a little bit, but the main thing is that it's not um, going to discolor onto your felted item um, that you're making. So that, that is the main thing. Right, let's have a look. Um, what people are saying. Oh my goodness, we have got so many people watching. I want you all to give us a massive big thumbs up. Um, remember to subscribe to our channel. I think that's the biggest number I've ever seen watching all on one day. I am so pleased. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, I hope I haven't said anything bad now. I feel very self-conscious. Um, oh, where's the name drug chicken come from? Peacocks are called drug chickens in our house. <laughs> yeah, I suppose they're a bit, they wear drag. Yeah, I love it. Um, Oh, Carol is watching from sunny Spain. Ooh, what are you doing in Spain, Carol? Um, Jane says, yes, I remember it well. Oh, yes, Jane was part of the chicken um, chicken making gang. Um, and um, yes, all those chickens hanging from the chairs by their feet. I'm sure I've got some photos somewhere. It was the most hilarious sight, I tell you now. And I had to get up in the middle of the night and move them around so that they, they all got a chance close to the fan heater. Um, it was very funny. Um... Oh, excellent. Angela says the new website works fine. Placed an order this morning for some more fluff. Oh, um, if you placed it this morning, it wasn't it wasn't the new website. Um, anyway, everybody just place an order now to try if it works. Um, Carol says, I must confess, I haven't had much to do with chickens, but my friend has a chicken visitor who comes to her gay, game gate, maybe gate. Um, Oh, Lorna says, that's one book I haven't got. Is that the Making Needle Felted Animals? That was the first book. Michael says, I think my memorable chicken experience was as a child, we used to go on holiday to some relatives who had a farm. We used to go and collect the eggs, which were on haystacks and in the hedge bottom. Well, that sounds just like what my chickens do. They never lay where they're meant to lay. And then um, days later, we find like 10 eggs in, an, in, the, in a space where we thought, ah, wow, that's where all the eggs have gone. Um, Penny says, when I was younger, the lady in the farm next to ours had bantams. We used to go down to see them as we chicks. I used to have one that followed me home and to have and um, to have to pick it up and carry it back. Oh, it's obviously Im imprinted on you. Um, that's nice. Um, Vampire Lemon says, I've got Ice Age 3 in my head now. Ooh, how, okay, I can't make this uh, connection, but I'm sure there will be connection up um coming up um trixie don't i don't know have you trixie have you been with us our first three chickens were called tracy sharon and dorian as they were bird birds of a feather oh nice we've had um let's let's talk about chickens chicken name we had amber was definitely we had a phase in our house where everything was called amber this is obviously my children naming things amber the doll was called amber the chicken was called amber everything was called amber and um, so we definitely had one chicken amber in fact the chicken that's on this book here was modeled on amber and she lived to quite an old age and she died in her sleep so she had a really nice like nice life unlike many other chickens who have had most horrible deaths because they're very accident prone and they always seem to find ways of um killing themselves even yeah you have to be they're very clumsy i think chickens um that, that's fair to say so yeah we had we've had oh we've had um we had some funny chicken names, but I can't think of them now. Um, right, let's go back to chicks. Let's start at the other end. Um, oh, um, do I need to, sh to tell you anything else? So, um, oh yes, I do want to talk about this. Summer retreat. I don't know what you all like, but you have booked on very busily, very nicely, 
we thank you very much and all the rest of it. However, what on earth is wrong with Bell Tent? Somebody please tell me. We've literally got no rooms left in the big house because everybody wants to be in the room instead of sleeping in a bell tent. If you offered me to sleep in a bell tent or in a room in the middle of the summer, I would 100% go for the bell tent any time. It's the nicest thing on the planet to sleep outdoors. The only thing is that you will have to bring extra bedding. So you will have to have a warm cover. Last year we had we handed out um, duvets for people who didn't bring thick enough sleeping bags or whatever you're bringing. I've never been cold in a tent. I've just I've basically just brought my duvet to sleep in a tent. You will have thermo rests which keep which keep the cold coming from from the floor up. There most tents are on a wooden platform, so there is no no cold floor that you're sleeping on. But the but the surface is slightly harder than. Um, um, when there's a tent on a soft grass part, they're, they're, they're there too, so they're not all on wooden platforms, so you can choose. Uh, the toilets are not too far away and we will put night lights out, so you can follow the path. Um, and there are outdoor showers, but you can also use all the indoors for facilities, so I think it's really great sleeping in a bell tent. You can have one all to yourself and um, we're making some um, amazing um, big creatures. Um, maybe a gnome, maybe a witch, maybe a tomtom, maybe whatever you whatever you want. I make the basic design. You can make the rest. You can um, turn it into whatever. And then just as a final thing, I will say, Sophie Wheatley, we have got spaces left at this uh, pet portrait or wild animal picture. You can bring a photo of your most favorite pet, maybe one from the past, maybe from the present, maybe one you want in the future, and make it um, real or as a as a flat. 2D needle felted uh, pet portrait, which is something that um, we've, as the makers, haven't done. Um, because to be perfectly honest, I don't think I could ever compete with people like Sophie Wheatley. She is an absolute master at uh, getting um, the features just so, not just putting the right color on everywhere, but capturing the essence of your pet. So do come and um, Book yourself onto that course. It's a non-residential workshop, but um, we will all have fun in the evenings. And Alicia is going, so she will keep you all amused, no doubt. Right, so let's um, continue on making a chick quickly. So the chick, again, is a is a bit of a um, combining colours. You can use white as well, um, or you can just use um, the flesh pink and um, some of the yellow. Uh, you need a bit of black for the eyes, and I definitely didn't put glue and eyes in that one. So you could uh, mix um, the lighter yellow with um, the flesh pink, if you wanted to make that sort of colour chick. Chicks are often very different colour to their um, parents, so you can go, they're often white or cream or um, slightly yellow, that sort of colour. They're, they're not normally brown, or not, not at first, I don't think, anyway. So... I'm mixing this colour and now I'm rolling this into a small ball. So I'm literally rolling it in on itself from one end to the other, how the, exactly the same way as we make basic shapes. When you get to the end of your ball, then you need your felting needle. Just stab it shut so that you can let go of it. So you've got a tiny little blob of, um, of a ball on um, a little ball shape on your mat. And then just stab it and be careful. But I think, and um, I've never tried this, I'm going to try this now. You can actually, you could use another needle, hold it down with it, and then stab into it all around. Feels a bit like I'm using chopsticks. So if you want to keep your fingers completely out of the way, because even this with finger protectors would feel really, really awkward, because the finger protectors, the big leather protectors, are really, um, they're really quite. Um, thick so that might be might make you feel a bit clumsy ah this works quite well once you get the hang of it so hold it down with um use a needle where you can hold it down with and then shape it with the other this first time i've ever done it but um i can't remember i think alicia gave me the idea you can hold pin it down with one felt with the other right there you go you've made a little ball shape now, the little uh, ball shape, um, you're sort of trying to make it more in an oblong. Remember, this is the tiniest of chicks on the planet. I'm giving it a bit of a flat base here so that I have now got a little, little, almost like a little um, shape here. 
you could hardly see it. It really doesn't matter if it's not the shape of your stuff. And then you're going to make a tiny little beak, even smaller than you did on the chicken. So I would just literally make a little ball. It doesn't even have to be a, a beak shape. Just make a tiny little ball just so that it holds together. Give it a bit of a twist between your fingers because that always flattens the fibers. Then you put it onto the little chick's face. You decide where that is. Put that on. And then the main thing is that you um, give it eyes and then you've got a chick. And you could give it little tiny little wings as well. So put the eyes here right by the side. One and two. It really doesn't matter if um, if 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 it doesn't look like the perfect little chick. There, tiny little blob. Can you see? Small. And then you, um, if you wanted to, you could just add a little bit of the whatever color you want, just on the side for fluffy down like little feathers. Just thread them down here on the side and do the other side as well. Once you've made a few of them, kind of, um, they work better in numbers than on their own, which is why um, you can make four to fit into the hen that you've just made. And um, like this looks quite a fleshy colour, so maybe do a, maybe go for a cream colour or even a very light yellow. But let's find the others and then we can put them all together. Right, chick number one, chick number two has got a red beak, you can do that too. That's got an orange beak and this one has got a yellow beak. So they're all completely different. Thanks Steffi, that's always very helpful. But um, four little chicks there and they can now all fit inside the hen. Put them in there any old way, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Nicely hidden away and nobody's any the wiser that this chicken holds a special secret. So you can put that inside the chicken. It's four. There you go. And uh, let's just compare it in size to the big chicken. Yeah, they're definitely falling out. Yeah, so you, if you make a big chicken like this, you need either big chicks or put something else inside, um, like an egg. That's basically the project done from beginning to end. And we've just got an hour exactly complete. So that's good timing. Um, I haven't heard any winners being drawn yet, but I'm sure Alicia is doing this momentarily so I can announce them as the last thing I'm doing um, at, on this live stream. And um, on Thursday, when you're watching this on Facebook, of course, there will be different winners and um, Alicia will be announcing them and I won't be announcing them because that will be in the future for me right now and um, I can't look into the future yet. I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. So we can all live in hope whilst I don't look into the future. And um, okay, let's have um, our winner of the day today. And I'm waiting patiently. Let's read some of the um, Ooh. Okay, so we have got so we have two winners. One is Vampire Midnight. Well done, Vampire Midnight. Is this the first time you've joined us? And Michelle. I think there's only one. I, I can't actually remember. Oh, yes, Michelle. I think it's Michelle M. I'm, I'm assuming. So brilliant. Well done. Um, you need to email us at info at the makers with two s's dot co dot uk. And uh, just, just basically say, I've won the £15 voucher today on YouTube. Uh, what do I need to do? And then we will um, respond accordingly and do what we do, which is, I have no idea what we do. I think we'll just send you a code that will entitle you to £15 off the website um, at, at, at any time when you're ready. Um, oh, where's the lid for this flipping bottle? It's really important to find that because, ah, got it, got it, got it. Um, yeah, so just email us, tell us tell us that you've won today on Thursday when you win on Facebook. Obviously, don't say you won it on YouTube. Just say you won it on Facebook and then we will get back to you with a unique code that's just for you 
for fifteen pounds off on anything on our website. I think it excludes the subscription boxes, um, potentially something else. I've forgotten now, but it's it's basically for everything. And um, if you are thinking, oh, I'm going to be really clever and I'm going to use this now, fifteen percent off. Um, sorry, fifteen pounds off plus twenty five percent discount. It's not gonna work. You can only ever use one voucher. Code. And that is not our fault. I promise you that is uh, basically how the system works. You can only put one code into um, the discount box at the checkout. So don't think I'm going to um, order all of this and basically we pay you to get it. It doesn't work like that. You do have to just use one code. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. But you can always use, use the 25% discount code now and save the £15 voucher for another time. How about that? Right. That's all from me today. Um, I hope to see you next week when we are unwrapping the um, subscription boxes. They're very, um, I wanted to show them to you today, but I'm not going to because I will tell you that you've still got time to get your um, Robin Makers box. And it's obviously not just the Robin, but you can make the fletchling and you get the nest with the eggs as well. You get the nest if you're anywhere near in the UK. If you're in um, outside the UK, you get it less the nest because we're not allowed to send it to you. But um, definitely the Robin and the fletchling and you can make the eggs for the imaginary nest. And then we've got the uh, bluebell um, fairy still as the um, um, as the fairy box and we've still got the fairy folk surprise box so this is all valid until the 28th of February um, where you can still get your boxes you haven't missed it but as of the 1st of March which will be the unboxing at 11 a.m you get the other boxes for March which is the hippo the lily of the valley fairy and the storm in a teacup surprise box that's it I'm done take care everybody um, just don't listen to the news just keep keep thinking positive thoughts and um, and we will see you next week. Bye.